Jacob, you weren't the only one who knew that the legal theory was wrong, though. Here is what various advisors to the president thought about that theory. You've been clear repeatedly with Mr. Meadows about you and the vice president having a different view about his authority on January 6th. I believe I had. Did Mr. Meadows ever explicitly or tacitly agree with you or say, yeah, that makes sense or okay? I believe that, um, that Mark did agree. What makes you say that? I believe that's what he told me, but... As I mentioned, I think Mark had told so many people so many different things that it was not something that uh, that I would necessarily accept as, okay, well, that means that's resolved. I see. Tell me more what, what he told you on this topic. Well, I think it was that you know the vice president doesn't have any broader role, and I think he was understanding that. So despite the fact that he may have said other things to the president or others, to you, he said he understands the pre vice yes. president has no role. Yes. Okay. Did he say that to you several times? A couple times. Mm -hmm. Before January 6th? Yes. The way it was communicated to me was that um, uh, Pat Cipollone thought the idea was, uh, was nutty and had uh, at one point uh, confronted Eastman uh, basically with the same sentiment. Pat expressed the, his admiration for the vice president's actions on the day of the 6th and said that uh, he concurred with the uh, legal analysis that, that our team had, had put together to reach um, that point. It made no sense to me that in all the protections that were built into the Constitution for a president to get elected and steps that had to be taken, that the power to choose the next president would be sitting at, with the vice president. Do you know if Mr. Clark or Mr. Um, Morgan, is it Morgan? Viewed about that, thought about that, Mr. Eastman's advice? Yeah, they thought he was crazy. Do you know if they ever expressed an opinion on whether they thought the vice president had the power that John Eastman said he did? Uh, I know for a fact I heard both say that his theory was crazy, that there was no uh, validity to it in any way, shape, or form. And did they express that before January 6th? Yes. To whom? I think anyone who would listen. Okay, uh, what were your prior interactions with Eastman? He described for me what he thought the ambiguity was in the statute, and he was walking through it at that time. And I said, to him, hold on a second, I want to understand what you're saying. You're saying that you believe the vice president acting as president of the Senate can be the sole decision maker as to, under your theory, who becomes the next president of the United States? And he said, yes. And I said, are you out of your effing mind? Right? And I, you know, that was pretty blunt. I said, you're completely crazy. I said, you're going to turn around and tell 78 plus million people in this country that your theory is this is how you're going to invalidate their votes because you think the election was stolen. And I said, they're not going to tolerate that. He said, you're going to cause riots in the streets. And he said, words to the effect of there's been violence in the history of our country, Eric, to protect the democracy or protect the republic. In fact, there was a risk that the lawyers in the White House Counsel's Office would resign. For example, Fox News host Sean Hannity expressed concern that the entire White House Counsel's Office could quit as you can see from these texts. Mr. Hannity wrote to White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows that, quote, we can't lose the entire White House Counsel's office. I do not see January 6th happening the way he is being told. A few days later, on January 5th, Mr. Hannity wrote to Mr. Meadows that, quote, I'm very worried the next 48 hours. Hence pressure, White House Counsel will leave. While Sean Hannity was apparently very concerned about the possibility that the White House counsel would resign in protest of the president's effort to force the vice president to violate the Constitution, some others close to the president were more dismissive of the White House counsel's position. Here's what Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner said 
during his deposition regarding the White House counsel, Pat Cipollone's threats to resign. Jared, uh, are you aware of um, instances where uh, Pat Cipollone threatened to resign? I, I kind of, uh, like I said, my interest at that time was on trying to get as many pardons done. Uh, and I know that, you know, he was always, him and the team were always saying, oh, we're going to resign. We're not going to be here if this happens, if that happens. So I kind of took it up to just be whining, to be honest with you. The president's own lead outside counsel, Rudy Giuliani, also seemed to concede that the vice president did not have the authority to decide the outcome of the election or send it back to the states. Here's what White House attorney Eric Hirschman said about his call with Mayor Giuliani on the morning of the 6th. The morning of January 6th, I think he called me out of the blue, right? And I was like getting dressed. And we had an intellectual discussion about Eastman's, uh, East, I don't know if it's Eastman's theory per se, but the VP's role. And you know, he was asking me my view and analysis and then the practical implications of it. And when we finished, he said, like, I believe that, you know, you're probably right. I, I think he thought when we're done that it would be something he'd have to consider if he was sitting on the bench. But he'd probably come down in that, you know, you couldn't interpret it or uh, sustain the argument long term. Of course, the fact that Mayor Giuliani seemed to admit that the theory was wrong did not stop him from going before the crowd just a few hours later on January 6th and saying the exact opposite. Here's Mayor Giuliani's speech at the Ellipse rally on January 6th. We're here uh, just very briefly to make a very important two points. Number one, every single thing that has been outlined as the plan for today is perfectly legal. I have Professor Eastman here with me to say a few words about that. He's one of the preeminent constitutional scholars in the United States. It is perfectly appropriate, given the questionable constitutionality of the Election Counting Act of 1887, that the Vice President can cast it aside, and he can do what a President called Jefferson did when he was vice president. He can decide, he can decide on the validity of these crooked ballots, or he can send it back to the legislatures, give them five to ten days to finally finish the work. And here's what Dr. Eastman said in his speech at the Ellipse on January 6th. And all we are demanding of Vice President Pence is this afternoon at 1 o'clock, he let the legislatures of the state look into this so we get to the bottom of it and the American people know whether we have control of the direction of our government or not.